The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's are milder, smoother and milder, with never a rough puff. Yes, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. These scientific tests are confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. There's no doubt, when you light up a Lucky, you get a smoother smoking, milder tasting cigarette. And you enjoy the rich taste of fine tobacco because... L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you more real deep down smoking enjoyment. So for the rich taste of fine tobacco, for smoothness and mildness with never a rough puff, light up a Lucky. Yes, prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, our little star is traveling throughout the country on a personal appearance tour. Tonight, he's in Cleveland, Ohio. So let us take you to the Civic Auditorium to Jack's dressing room. Rochester. Rochester. Just a minute, boss. I'm putting a star on your dressing room door. Oh, good, good. Yes, sir. When people look at this door, they'll not only know that you're the star of the show, but that you also come from California. They will? Yeah, I made the star out of an orange peel. Stop <laughs> being silly, making a star out of an orange peel. Come on in here. Just a minute. Wait till I light the smudge part. <laughs> Never mind. I'll come in here and straighten out my clothes. Yes, sir. By the way, did you clean the suit I wore in the last show? You mean the one with the rose in the lapel? That's not a rose. While I was playing my violin, some smart aleck hit me with a tomato. <laughs> you know, Rochester, talking about tomatoes and oranges has made me hungry for some fruit. Well, let's wait and see what the next show brings. <laughs> yeah, it's silly to buy it when people are so generous. Isn't it? <laughs> now, Rochester... Uh, straighten up my dressing room table so that I can... Come in. Uh, Mr. Benny? Yes? Uh, my name is Kearns. I'm a reporter on one of the local papers. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Kearns? How do you do? Now, uh, Mr. Benny, would you mind giving me some information about your personal appearance tour? That is, uh, where do you go from here? Well, tomorrow night we'll be in Pittsburgh, Tuesday Buffalo, Wednesday Toronto, Thursday Syracuse, Friday Montreal, Saturday Boston, and next Sunday, June 4th, at Carnegie Hall in New York City for the Damon Runyon Fund. And our last day, June 5th, is in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And then we sail for London to play the Palladium Theater. Well, you certainly have a heavy schedule with your radio program and all. Oh, no, no, no. You see, today I do my last program of the season. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, I'm one of your regular listeners, and I'll certainly miss you during the summer. Well, thank you. In fact, I'll miss your whole gang. Well, they'll be very happy to hear that. Say, Mr. Benny, I just got an idea that would make a very interesting story for my paper. Your cast has been with you for such a long time... I'm sure my readers would like to know how you first met each one of them. Well, let's start with Mary. Uh, she joined me on the radio about three months after I got started. I was in Los Angeles at the time, almost 18 years ago. I happened to step into the May Company. As a matter of fact, I bought this shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> Uh, they give guarantees, you know. <laughs> anyway, it was in the latter part of 1932. I had purchased my shirt. I gave the man a dollar and was waiting for my change. <laughs> I don't know why they always have to go upstairs to get the change. Oh, well. Just a gigolo everywhere I go. Uh, people know the part I'm playing. 
Gee, that's a catchy new tune. Dum, da, 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 dum, dum. Hey, look at that beautiful girl behind the hosiery counter. What a chicken. I think she's, uh, I think she's looking at me, too. After I get my change, I'll go over and try to date her up. Say, Mary. Mary. What is it, Tallulah? <laughs> Look at that guy over there. He's staring at you. Where? Right over there at the shirt counter. Say, he looks kind of prosperous, don't he? How can you tell? With those bell-bottom pants, he might be barefoot. <laughs> Look at him, he's winking at us. Yeah. And get a load of that straw hat he's wearing with the bright red ribbon on it. Yeah. And look what it says on it, the Waukegan kid. <laughs> hey, Tallulah, he's tipping his hat at us. Yeah, he's got the string in his pocket. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, he's coming over here. Do you want me to take him, Mary? No, no, I can handle him. Uh, just a gigolo, I, everywhere I go... Uh, people know the part I'm uh, playing. Lucky's walking like Theda Barra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a gigolo, every. Hello, kiddo. Where have you been all my life? Avoiding it. <laughs> hey, you're sharp. I like tomatoes with a little spice. <laughs> Say, baby, uh, what's your name? Mary. Mary what? Quite contrary? Oh, brother, is this guy corny? <laughs> what was that? Look, my name is Mary Livingston. I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey. I know I should be in pictures, but I'm happy here at the May Company. And they think I'm a very good sales girl. Now, what do you want? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. You got me wrong, baby. Don't you know who I am? No, thrill me. <laughs> well, take a grip on the counter, baby, because I'm going to enlighten you. I happen to be Jack Benny. Well, what do you know? Hey, Tallulah, he's Jack Benny. Who's Jack Benny? <laughs> I don't know. Ask him. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding. You know who I am. You ought to go out with me. I've been on the radio three months. So what? My lamp's been on the radio three years, and I won't go out with that either. The lamp? Say, you're pretty fast on the trigger. What are you doing working here in the department store? You know, you should be on the radio. What did I tell you, Tallulah? I knew it was coming. What? My mother told me there'd be men like you, but I thought they'd be much younger. <laughs> Say, you're terrific. Listen, baby, you got everything it takes. Good looks, a nice speaking voice, and what a personality. <laughs> I'll bet you tell that to all the girls. No, I don't. <laughs> now, listen, Mary, you ought to be on the radio with me. I'll get you places. You'll be a big star. Say, you're not kidding, are you? Of course not. Look, at why don't you meet me tonight for dinner, and we'll talk things over. And that, Mr. Kearns, is how I found Miss Livingston. That's a very interesting story, Mr. Benny. Thank you. Uh, Don Wilson's been with you for a long time, too, hasn't he? Yes. Uh, I don't know what I'd do without Donzi. But, you know, there was one year when I really got mad at him. It happened in 1946. It was the opening of that season. <laughs> Well, Don, here we are at the start of another season. That's right, Jack. How does it feel to get back in the groove? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm a little excited. I've got a nervous stomach. <laughs> I know just how you feel, Jack. I've got a nervous stomach, too. Well, you're just about 30 inches more nervous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be all right. Say, Don, have you got everything all set for your part of the program? You know, just the way you want it? Uh, I sure have, Jack. I took the liberty of hiring a quartet to work with me during the commercial. A quartet? Well, that sounds novel. Jack, I thought it was so novel that I put them under contract for eight weeks. And it'll only cost you $500 a week. That isn't too much, is it? Why, no. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean... <laughs> 
Don, that quartet must be sensational for that kind of money. Oh, they are, Jack. Now, this will start a new style in radio. Talking commercials with a big vocal background. You'll be crazy about it. I know, but $500. Well, if it's as good as you say, it might be worth it. Can I hear him now? Why, certainly, Jack. Say, fellas, come on up to the microphone. Hmm, nice-looking boys. Okay, Don, let's hear this uh, musical commercial. Okay. Ready, boys? L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, yes, sir, you bet. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Lucky strikes are made of that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. <laughs> Look. Look, for for this, I'm paying five hundred dollars? Yes. Don, Don, Moby Dick. <laughs> get them out of here. Oh, now don't get excited, Jack. They can really sing. Now give them another chance. Well, okay, but they better sing good. Oh, they will, Jack. All right, fellas, take it. L-S-M-F-T, pop, 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 pop. L-S-M-F-T, pop, 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 pop. L-M-N-O-P, pop, 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 pop. Oh, Robert E. Lee. Ha, 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 Robert E. Lee. P-L-S-N. Me, 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 me. Oh, cher, che, la, femme. Wee, 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 wee. L-S-M-F-T. La, 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 la. M-F-T. La, 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 la. That's the smoke of smokes for me. La, la, la. Stop waltzing. Stop waltzing. Boy, stop dancing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And that, uh, that, Mr. Kearns... <laughs> and that, Mr. Kearns, was why I got so mad at Don Wilson. But I really shouldn't have, because today, the Sportsman Quartet is really quite successful. As a matter of fact, right now, they're appearing at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. Oh, then you like the quartet now. Yes, yes. You see, when they sing, it's so soothing, because it, it drowns out Phil Harris's orchestra. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> and, and now that you mention Phil, Mr. Benny, uh, how did you ever find him, anyway? Phil Harris? Well, it was about 14 years ago. One evening, Mary and I were taking a walk down Figueroa Street. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary, we've walked quite a ways. Say, before we catch the bus back home again, would you like to step into this nightclub and relax a little? What nightclub? This place right here. They got a band and everything. Now look at that poster on the wall. Phil Harris and the sweetest music this side of the Hyperion Outfall. <laughs> Phil Harris? I never heard of him. And what a nightclub. This is an awful joint. I don't want to go here. Well, look, Mary, I'm looking for an orchestra leader for my program. Maybe this guy will be the one. Come on, let's go. But, Jack, it's way down those stairs. What's the difference? Let's go down anyway. And wa watch your step, will you? rest. If I go down any farther, I'll get the bends. I think we hit bottom, Jack. Here's the door. Oh, yes. Well, 
that that guy Harris, hey, he knows he knows all the new tunes. Yeah, but how can people dance on that bare ground? Well, they they probably sprinkle it with water to make it slippery, you know. And it helps keep the dust down, too. Let's find a table. Well, maybe that man will get us one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Pardon me, are you the waiter? Well, what do you think I am with this napkin over my arm? A new father? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, but you're dressed too nice to be working in a joint like this. Oh, you mean these striped pants and this Prince Albert coat? Yeah. Well, you see, I wear these clothes on my other job. Other job? Yes, I'm an undertaker's assistant. <laughs> oh. It was my idea to put the candles on the table. <laughs> hmm. And now, would you like to have me find a table and lay you out? <laughs> I mean, seat you. Yes, please. Come on, Mary. Uh, here you are. Now, what would you like to eat? Uh, nothing, thank you. We just came in to hear the band. Well, you might as well order something. There's a 35-cent minimum. <laughs> 35 cents? Well, I'll have a chicken sandwich and a combination salad. And I'll have a steak sandwich and french fried potatoes. Anything to drink? No. You might as well. You've got 15 cents to go. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, bring us coffee. Imagine that waiter, an undertaker's assistant. Jack, look, the show's about to start. Good, I'm anxious to hear this guy, Phil Harris. Hiya, folks, and welcome to our little club. This is your orchestra leader and master of ceremonies, the one and only Phil Harris. Are you glad to see me? Well, we've got a nice crowd here tonight. <laughs> hey, Mary. Mary, he has a swell personality. We'll see. And speaking of crowd, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the club today. A guy walked up to me and said, Hey, Harris, where'd you get the black eye? So I told him it was a birthmark. And he said, a birthmark? And I said, yeah, I got in the wrong birth. <laughs> No, lady, don't explain it to him. If you don't get it, just let him suffer. Let him lay there. <laughs> hey, Mary. Mary, did you get it? I got it all over me. <laughs> Quiet. He's good. Hey, here's another one, folks. This will embalm you. <laughs> embalm you. Hey, did somebody call for me? <laughs> Quiet. He's going to tell another joke. Hey, get this, folks. Sing, you bum! <laughs> There's been a request that I sing. <laughs> so now I'm going to do a little number that I wrote myself. It's entitled, That's What I Like About the South. <laughs> Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy. That's what I like about the town. Well, folks, that concludes our first show. But don't go away. We have another complete new show in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary. Mary, this guy is terrific. He'd be great on the radio. He's got something new, something different. Oh, you say that every time you see a man with hair. <laughs> Look, I don't care what you think. I'm going to get him over here. Hey, waiter. Waiter. Yes? Will you please bring the orchestra leader over to my table? Uh, I'm sorry. He doesn't come with the 35-cent dinner. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Bring him over here. All right. All right. I don't know, Mary, but this guy Harris really has a great personality. Cigarettes, cigarettes, cupid dolls, gardenias, and razor blades. <laughs> Imagine razor blades. Oh, miss, give me a package of cigarettes, please. Yes, sir, what kind? Uh, Lucky Strikes. Uh, Jack, do you smoke Lucky Strikes? Certainly, Mary, they're wonderful. And who can tell? You know, I may be working for them someday. <laughs> oh, by the way, miss, what's that you've got on your tray there tied up in a pink ribbon? That's a lock of Mr. Harris's hair, 20 cents. <laughs> Well, I don't want it. You better take it. This is the last one left, and we don't shear him again till the first of the month. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, no, no. Thanks, just the same. Here are your lockies. Thank you. Say, Mary, she's kind of cute. You know? Oh, you fall wait for... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes Phil Harris. Hey, uh, I understand one of your cookies want to see me. Why, yes, yes. Sit down. Uh, this is Miss Livingston. Ah, uh, hiya, babe. And my name is Jack Benny. <laughs> Look, bud, I ain't got much time. What do you want to see me about? Well, I want to talk to you about a job. A job? Yes. Can you wait on tables? <laughs> I don't mean that. I've got a job. Look, you see, I have a radio program, and I'd like you and your band to be on my show, Mr. Harris. Uh, just call me Curly. Oh. Till the first of the month. <laughs> oh, yes, your cigarette girl told me, yes. Now, Mr. Harris, radio is a different type of work. Uh, you read music, of course. Huh? <laughs> I mean, music, notes, arrangements. What's that on your, on your music racks? Termites. The joint's lousy with them. <laughs> Oh, Harris, how can you be so bright when it's so dark down there? <laughs> See, Mary, this guy's got a terrific sense of humor. He'd probably be able to write my jokes for me. I'll settle if he could just write. <laughs> now, look, Harris, I want you on my program. So if you'll meet me Sunday morning at the studio, we'll talk it over. Okay, I'll be there. Hey, Max, sprinkle the floor again. The customers want to dance. And that, Mr. Kearns, is how I met Phil Harris. Well, that's quite a story. And Mr. Benny, just how did you discover Dennis Day? Dennis Day? Mm -hmm. Well, to tell you the truth, Mary discovered him. Really? Yes, it was about ten years ago. I was looking for a singer for my program. And one day, Mary came rushing into my house. Jack, Jack. Right here, Mary. What is it? Uh, have you found a new singer yet? No. Well, I found one. His name is Dennis Day. Look, here's a picture of him. Say, if the kid can sing, he's just what I want. Look at that face. Those bright, intelligent eyes. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. So I called his house and told him to come right over so you could meet him. Well, Mary, when he gets here, let me do all of... Ooh, maybe that's him now. I'll answer the door. Hello, Mr. Benny. That's Mr. Benny over there. <laughs> oh. Say, kid. Yes, please. Hmm. <laughs> Say, you're really polite, aren't you? Oh, yes. My mother told me never to be fresh to old folks. <laughs> Now, kid, how, how would you like to be on the radio? Oh, I'd like that very much. In fact, I'd like to get any kind of a job. Then I wouldn't have to let my father cut my hair. Uh, your father cut your hair? Yeah. Yesterday, while he was giving me a trim, he cut one of my ears off. <laughs> cut one of your ears off? Wait a minute, kid. You've got two ears. Now, yes. <laughs> hmm, look, Mary, but, I don't... But, uh... <laughs> He'll never Jack, do it. He'll Jack, never do him. this, fella. Le Jack. He won't be good, I'm telling you. He'll never... Jack. I won't be able to stand him, I know. Jack, you can just use him to sing. He doesn't have to say anything. I guess so. Well, kid, how would you like to work on my program? Well, I'll have to ask my mother first. Your mother? She's right outside. I'll go call her. Oh, mother! Mother! Don't mind her greasy overalls. She just came from work. <laughs> oh. Mother, uh, this is Mr. Benny. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Now, Mrs. Day... Hmm, she had to put her pipe wrench on my piano. What are you mumbling about? Mrs. Day, I'd like to have your son on my radio program. Oh, Mr. Benny, you don't know what this means to us. Just a few minutes ago, my son was nothing. And now he's the star of your show. Star? He'll have lines to read, songs to sing. He'll have his own dressing room. And he'll be treated with the utmost respect. Yeah, utmost. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Day, I want your boy to be on my program, but I just want him to sing a song. Are you trying to hold him down? <laughs> my boy has talent. He'll sing two songs. Mrs. Day, put down that wrench. <laughs> Not on the piano. <laughs> Don't shout at me! Nobody shout! 
<laughs> and you've got a lot of nerve invading the privacy of a man's house. After all, this is a private home. What's private about it? You've got a lemonade stand on the lawn, a juice box in the living room, a payphone in the hall, and a row of Bendix washing machines on the back porch. <laughs> There's no business like show business. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Day, if you want your boy to be on my program, just be at my lawyer's office tomorrow morning. Gee, he's suing us already. <laughs> I'm not suing you. And go. Gee, I'm afraid, Mary, really. <laughs> that was quite a story, Mr. Benny. And I understand that through the years, Dennis has learned to love you like a father. Yes, but his mother still hates me. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Benny, while you're off the air for the summer, who's going to replace you? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. We have a wonderful show for the summer. Now, my time every Sunday will be filled by Guy Lombardo and his orchestra. And it's really a very, very fine show. Oh, yes, yeah, he's great. Hey, boss, you'll be on in a few minutes. Oh, thanks, Rochester. Well, I got to be running along now, Mr. Kearns. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Say, Rochester, you've been with Mr. Benny for a long time, haven't you? Oh, yes, about 12 years. 12 years? Say, that is a long time. Yes, sir. Well, Rochester, I suppose your salary's increased considerably since you first started. Well, Mr. Benny gave me raises for the first four years, and then it suddenly stopped. Why? What happened? He adopted me. Say, Rochester, what's that lying on the dressing table? Uh-oh, Mr. Benny forgot it. Oh, boss, boss! Yes, Rochester? You forgot it again! Oh, well, I gotta get right on the stage. Throw it to me. <laughs> well, what do you know? He caught it right on his head. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Curry. Goodbye, Rochester. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of our great national hazards is fire. Each year, more than 10,000 people lose their lives in fires. And in nine cases out of ten, these fires were caused by carelessness. Be sure it doesn't happen to you. Put that match or cigarette out before you discard it. Take every precaution you can to prevent fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... In a cigarette, mildness is a true measure of smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky because Luckies are milder, smoother and milder with never a rough puff. Yes, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. These scientific tests are confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. And no wonder. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. So for more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, for a milder-tasting cigarette with never a rough puff, smoke a Lucky. You'll enjoy the smooth, rich taste of Lucky's fine tobacco. You'll prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarette. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Well, folks, this closes another season. But we'll be with you again on Sunday, September 10th. In the meantime, be sure to listen to Guy Lombardo and his orchestra. I want to thank everybody connected with my show and all you listeners for making this past season so pleasant. Good night, everybody. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Listen next week at the same time for Guy Lombardo and his orchestra over most of the same stations. The Jack Benny program came to you transcribed. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>